Good evening, everyone, or from wherever you may be around the world, and it's evening here in Europe. Um, uh, however, our guest today is in Mexico, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I know he's from Mexico, um, and we're going to be chatting with him in just a second. So who will be our guest on this Instagram Live today on the ELMS official Instagram account? I'll give you a few clues. I said he was um, Mexican, um, the only Mexican of the ELMS 2020 grid. Um, he drives in the LMP2 category, this year, he'll be driving for Dragon Speed back with the um, with his old team. Um, he's a double ELMS champion in 2017 with G Drive Racing, run by Dragon Speed, and in 2019 with EDEX Sport. Um, and if you haven't guessed already, it is of course Memo Rojas. So I'm just going to see. I've just seen he is online. Memo, I'm just going to accept your request to join. I gave you a little bit, a bit of an introduction. Here we go. Um, there we go. Memo, so as I say, I'll be chatting to Memo Rojas in just a few seconds. Providing connection is good, and it is. How are you doing, Memo? Hello, everyone. Uh, nice, nice to see you uh, from America. I'm actually in Mexico City. Um, nice. And uh, doing well, uh, happy to be here. Great, fantastic. So how has lockdown been going for you? How are you? What have you been up to? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're just trying to deal with the uh, difficult times right now, as you know. Um, uh, you know, it's been a wild year. Uh, we're trying to to take things as up optimistic as possible, uh, working hard uh, on the fitness side, uh, trying to, try to stay in shape uh, as much as possible. And just, I can't wait to get back racing, you know. I, I appreciate it. I can understand that. Now, how have you been doing what a lot of other drivers have been doing? Uh, we've discussed it with Felipe and Sophia. Have you been doing any sim racing? I, th I've been, uh, I have a sim. It's probably not the, not the best sim out there. Uh, it, and, and I've been on my own. I have not uh, doing, I have been doing live races yet. Um, but but that's uh, the reason is because I don't know how to set it up. I'm not a computer. So <laughs> I need to get someone to help set it up to the to the, to the live racing. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I've been I've been on my team every week. You're better in a real car, anyway. Say that again. You're better in a real car, so you know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> One thing I noticed is that, um, you know, uh, the sim is not the same as a real race car. And, uh, and the sim, the sim drivers, the, the guys who actually do it all the time, they're pretty good. So uh, it'd be nice to see them on a real race car one day. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, so have, what do you think? Firstly, um, how did tests go in, uh, I think it was the beginning of March for you guys in Spain? How did it go? It went well. Um, you know, it was my first uh, time back with uh, Dragon Speed after two years. I was, uh, you know, very, very happy to work with uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Cullen, who, who will be my teammate this year. Uh, great guy. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, Ben Hanley couldn't make it because he was testing at, at Sebring. But I know Ben, we, we were teammates in, in 2017 in different cars. But, uh, but you know, I think we did a great job with Ryan uh, and myself, uh, and uh, you know we, we're ready to start this. Time, you know? So as you say, you're back with Dragon Speed. Uh, what was it like to be back? You know, seeing some familiar faces. <laughs> it's great because you know it's not like you know every time you you go to a new team, there's kind of um, an application process, learning, even learning all the names. I, I, I personally like to learn. All the names of all my all my guys, all the mechanics, all the crew, and it was a bit easier because I was them already. So that was that was good. And um, it's the same engineer I work with, Paul, uh, team manager, Elton Julian, who I know very well, and we, we won the championship in 2017. So it makes the, um, the transition a bit easier. Uh, although we, you know, we get raced, you know, we haven't done it racing yet. So you won with them in 2017. You also a current reigning champion in uh, 2019 with EDEC um, Sport. But can you just tell us, out of the two, what was the hardest 
to win. What year was the hardest to win a championship, would you say? Well, I think definitely 2019, last year, because we were the underdogs, uh, you know, getting support the last race. The drive was leading the championship. Uh, we had a bad race at the uh, My team, Polu, had a crash uh, uh, in qualifying and the coach to destroy the car. We that first of all, Polu was fast. Uh, and uh, and Polu, uh, you know, he was he was okay physically, and the team the team was able to rebuild the car overnight, and um, and uh, that took us to Portimao with very very little chance to to win the championship, and uh, we needed to win the race. They needed to finish sixth or worse, and they made a mistake. You know, we we pushed as hard as we could, and we did what we could, which which was win the race, but that was not going to be enough. And uh, you know, with uh, you know, one hour to go, uh, it just happened, and uh, you know, it was a very emotional moment. I imagine it was. I imagine it was. Um, so we've got a few questions. Uh, well, a lot of questions, in fact, from the fans. Um, I'll start with this one from. Um, what is your best ELMS memory? My best ELMS memory. I say probably winning the championship in Portimao last year. You know, it was very emotional. Like I said, um, it was, um, you know, because we didn't expect it. You know, to be honest, as a driver, you always push to the limit and you expect to win. But this time, the numbers were not in our favor. You know, it was very, it was going to be a very difficult. Um, uh, uh, it was it, we didn't have any chance to win or very limited. And when it happened, you know, expectation and it's all happens it's like wow you know um remember the connection isn't great is there any chance of moving anywhere else to get a better connection you just keep on cutting out yes let me let me try hold on is that second. okay we'll, we'll we'll bear with you so um yeah please do it's just because it's as i said um i just asked memo if you could from wi-fi to to 4g i don't know if that's better okay, is that better let's give that a go yeah, is that any better? It's better. Yeah, great. Okay. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Um, okay. So, sorry. So, you said you're just going back. It was um, your best ELMS memory was last winning the championship in Portimao last year. Yes, Portimao was definitely one of the best ELMS memories last year because, like I, I was mentioning before it broke up, um, um, I was we were not expecting uh, to win the championship because the. The numbers, you know, numbers don't lie. You know, we, we had very limited chance to win the championship. We pretty much needed a mistake by G Drive, which they happened to make. Yeah. <laughs> With, uh, not long to go in the race. We, we had to win the race. That was an obligation. And we, we did the best. But we were leading the race, but we didn't know if G Drive was going to make the mistake. And uh, when you don't expect something and it suddenly happens, it's. it's it's big emotion. You know? Okay. Um, what would you say the qualities of a good endurance driver are? That's the qualities of, of a good what? A good um, endurance driver. Oh. Well, that's a good one because when I switched from open wheel racing to endurance racing, there was a um, mission process where you needed to change a little bit your mindset, uh, especially because, um, you know, in, in, in open wheel racing, you, you work on your own. Um, it's a bit selfish, you know, the, the atmosphere and the way you do with your teammates, etc. And when you get to endurance, you change that mindset. You need to... Um, your teammates... Instead of your enemy, they are your number one uh, uh, partners, partners in say. And, and uh, I developed the ability to work as a team uh, in a very manner. Uh, also, you know, you need the aggressiveness level is quite high in endurance race, but you need to um, you need to manage that because at the end of the day, you need to, for example, in in Le Mans in the twenty four hour race. You know, you need to take off the car. The car need to, needs to be there for, for the end of the race. You... Work 
working with um, a, to work, working in a team as opposed to working by yourself. So, okay, so that's a good quality. One of the a few of the qualities of a good endurance driver. Why did you choose to specialise in endurance racing? Well, I guess it happened um, as a consequence of, of where my career my career path uh, took. Um, uh, you know, I was trying. I was trying to get at some point in my career to IndyCar in America because that's where I started my career, in the United States. And eventually, I came to Europe trying to to, to achieve the dream of Formula One. I know there's very limited opportunities uh, to make it in Formula One or IndyCar. You know, you need to be good, you need to be talented, you need to be lucky, and you need to be at the right place at the right time. So. You know, unfortunately, that didn't it, getting a, a call by Chip Ganassi Racing to drive for them in in uh, IMSA, United States, and cover you know what, what ended up being the best uh, you know the best opportunity in my career driving Ganassi in America, like driving for you know for McLaren or or Mercedes in Formula One. I had a big, uh, a very good time there for eight years with the eight spot spread. Mm -hmm. We won the Insta Championship four times and we won the 24 Hours of Daytona three times. So it just happened, you know, uh, the, the opportunities, you know, you just take the opportunities as they come and I had the opportunity to drive for cheap and it, my career path just took over, took, took off them since then. Okay, now what's your favourite track on the ELMS calendar and why? Past or present? Actually, it was one of the questions that was asked on Instagram uh, this week, yesterday. Um, what is your favourite track, like um, old track or new track, um, on the ELMS calendar and why? Well, this may sound, sound as a cliche, but Spa, you know, Spa is... It's like the roller, the roller coaster of motorsports, you know. It's fun, it has uh, elevation changes, it has very fast and challenging corners like Ration or Rouge. Um, you know, everybody, every driver says that. I know we all said that, but the reason we all say that is because it is so much fun. So Spa, favorite track on the MS calendar. Um, I have a question from Ryan Cullen. Who wants to know, are we going back to that restaurant in Barcelona this year? Yes, of course. I, I took him to a very nice Spanish restaurant. And I, I suppose he, he enjoyed it so much because he, he made me go there again the following night. Um, it was a nice Spanish restaurant. Um, and uh, I had to translate for him because he speaks zero Spanish. So, uh, yeah, he was like my, 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 my baby. So obviously this kind of confinement period is extremely difficult for all kind of athletes. Um, I mean, would you say that it's going to be slightly easier for you knowing that you're kind of coming off a big championship win? Does that make it slightly easier for you? Not really, you know, because, you know, winning the championship doesn't necessarily guarantee anything for the following year, you know. If anything, the guys don't win the championship, you know, they, they have hunger, they, they prepare harder, they work harder. So you need, you need to do the same stay at the level. You know, my experience in LMS is that um, every year has been getting uh, tougher. The competition is, is tougher, close to 20 cars in, in prototypes in, in LMS2. Um, and, if, and you look at the grid, you look at the net. You know, you have big champions from many, many, other, many different classes. Um, for uh, ex Formula One drivers, um, LMP One, uh, Formula E drivers, winners. <laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, there's no guarantee. You need to, to to win again. You need to stay at the top of the game uh, all the time. Okay, and what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for you this year? So say that again. What is going to be the biggest challenge for you this year on the ELMS? Well, because of the situation with the coronavirus, as you know, all sports events you know have a will have a very condensed uh, schedule. Right. So we will be pretty much I don't know uh, like a, like a three month, four month schedule. 
So the biggest challenge will be to, uh, uh, you know, to do everything in a short period of time because at the end of the day, uh, racing wears, wears out the people, wears out the mind, uh, equipment. So when you have uh, you know, time in race, you have time to uh, to recover from from a bad race or mentally, uh, you know, you know, uh, be. Ready. But I think this time will be very fast everything and uh, and also the fact that we haven't been driving for such a long time, everybody will be a bit rusty. Cool. So getting back to action, I think it will be for the drivers a little bit. Uh, difficult, but we're all on the same boat, so it'll be the same for everybody. Absolutely, no, you're right, you're absolutely right. They're all on the same boat. Um, there's one question from Il Puri How is racing the Temple of Speed at Monza? What is it like racing at Monza? How is racing Monza Say that again? What is it like to race at Monza, ah. the Temple of Speed? Well, you know, Monza, the first time I drove there, it was quite a, an amazing experience because first of all the, the track is quite narrow it's very fast but you don't realize how nar narrow it is compared to other tracks and I mean I mean there's tracks like uh, I don't know, Paul Ricard that you know you can fit probably five cars with uh, yeah. in the straight and I think Monza might not might fit two and a half cars <laughs> you know it, it's quite narrow um, but at the same time, the streets are so long and the are so high that, uh, you know, you're going on a, on a very high speed on a very narrow track. It's, you need to be on your toes to, to not make a mistake. And I enjoy a lot of uh, heartbreaking songs. You, know, Monta, you go very fast. Yeah. You have to throw the car down, you know, very aggressively. So it really puts into uh, into attempt the brakes of the car. You know, brakes are always important there, and how and the ability of a driver to, to brake as late as possible. So it's all about real kind of testing with regards to um, control, car control. Yes, I think braking is the most important in Monza. You know, being able to brake late and 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 not overshoot the corners. That's very important. Right, I hope that answers this question for him. Um, we have another question here. Don't hesitate in asking any of your um, uh, any of your questions. In fact, it was there. That was the actual question that just popped up. Um, so, what do you mean? I mean, with regards to this year, uh, this up and coming twenty twenty season. I mean, what do you think of the grid? Hey, what, what do I think of the grid? Yeah, the grid. Oh well, you know, I think two thousand nineteen was. Was was a tough grief, and I think 2020 will be tougher um, because the many teams have achieved a very strong life. As you know, ELMS um, uh, has a blend of uh, in LMP2 of uh, you know uh, gold drivers, platinum drivers, and silver drivers. And but you know some of the silver the fast as the gold and platinum. Uh, Many teams have achieved a really high level of, of silver drivers, and but we are lucky to be one of those. You know, I think the lineup that uh, Dragon Speed and Elton Julian have put for us together this year with Ben and Brian Cullen is one of the the best uh, with with others. So I think there's going to be probably ten cars that, that can fight for the championship. Okay, and of course you've got 24 hours of Le Mans on the agenda again this, uh, this year? Yes, that's, I, I would say that's the, the uh, you know, the, the, best, the, 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 the best thing of the season because, you know, it's, it's a very important race. Um, you know, what, one of the reasons I came back to Europe uh, four years ago from Inca was the, because I had it all in my mind to win the triple crown of endurance race, which is the 24 hours of Daytona, the 12 hours of Sebring, which I, I won already both. It's kind of cutting out a bit. I would love to win Le Mans one day in LMP2 and have the three races in my pocket. That's that's the goal. In the in the meantime, I've managed to win the championship twice, the LMS championship, but I haven't won the Le Mans. So uh, that's still the missing part. I would love to, to do one day, 
um, two years ago with IDEC, uh, we had the pole position with, with Polu Chatan, and we had a chance to win the race, but, but we, we broke the gearbox with three hours to go. So, uh, so you know, to win Le Mans, somebody one, one time told me that uh, you don't get to win Le Mans, you know, Le Mans to win, you know, and sometimes you you do everything the best you can, you prepare well, you are fast, and you put yourself in a position to win, but you still need luck, luck to win Le Mans. So, I hope one day Le Mans is yeah, and why not the double this year? ELMS and 24 Hours of Le Mans. <laughs> yes. That's the goal. Um, so just, um, Memo, I know you have a lot of fans in, um, uh, well, obviously in Mexico, but in Spanish-speaking countries. Do you what kind of, you have, give a, have a word, do you have a word for any of them in Spanish? Can you repeat that again, sorry? For all your fans, uh, Spanish-speaking fans, could you just give a quick word out for them? Is yes, for thing? sure. Yeah, there's some some people uh, writing in Spanish. Uh, a todos los fans eh, latinos, mexicanos que nos están escuchando, pues gracias por acompañarnos en este Instagram Live. Eh, hemos estado hablando en inglés, pero eh, pues hemos platicado de que ya estamos listos para arrancar la temporada. Como saben, las cosas no han sido fáciles para todos, pero estamos muy emocionados de que regresen los eventos deportivos, eh, vamos a hacer todo lo posible pues por pelear nuevamente por el título y buscar una victoria en las 24 horas de Le Mans. Gracias a todos por, eh, por apoyarnos, por estar aquí y, y bueno, eh, acá estamos. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you've resumed everything, so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate um, you kind of putting a little word out there for your Spanish fans. Um, do you have anything you want to add to this interview before we wrap it up? Uh, do, do I what? Do you have anything to add to this interview, anything you'd like to say? Well, uh, yeah, I guess I, I would just like to, to send a message to everyone uh, uh, that, you know, we're all living difficult times right now. Uh, and I, I'd like to think that this is like a 24 hour race where when you start the race, there's a lot of uncertainty and, uh, and anxiety. And you don't know what's going to happen. When the night comes, some people are crashing out, making mistakes, and you, you're doing the best you can to stay the pace. But at some point, the sun rises up, and, and you see hope at the end of the uh, coming, you know, to the end of the race. But we're living now something like that. And I would encourage everybody to stay hopeful, to 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 cheer up, and and uh, and you know the, the end of the we're just a few hours uh, from the end of the race to get back to, to to how we like to enjoy life. And thank everyone to be here, to all the fans, and uh, and I I wait to see everybody in in the paddock soon. Thank you very much, Memo. Thank you very much for this interview. And we really all look forward to seeing you extremely soon on the racetrack. So thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you on the ELMS uh, next day at the stop. So thank you very much. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.